Hey guys, it's Jane. It is September today. And um, let me tell you, in Melbourne, spring has arrived, uh, which is not before time because it has been a long, hard winter. And um, today is such a beautiful day. I've spent all morning pretty much outside at the playground. And um, it's, yeah, it's sunny and beautiful and I'm very excited about that but it also means that it's time for my August wrap-up so let's get right down to it. I read one book this month before Booktubeathon, uh, which was Pleasantville by Attica Locke. Um, I did a full review of this as a Mystery Monday video, so I'll link that below and I won't tell you anything about it except for it was a stonking great read. It's on the shortlist for the Gold Dagger, CWA Gold Dagger for the best crime novel of the year, and I think it's absolutely in the running. Then there was Booktubeathon, as we all remember. Um, and uh, during Booktubeathon, I read my seven books, which is a bit exciting, um, which were uh, Batgirl Volume 1, Fell My Lovely by Raymond Chandler, Animal Farm by George Orwell, The Lasker's Dagger by Glenda Lark, Adventure Time Volume 6, and I also uh, put in as my seventh thing one of my part of my Bible read along. I think it was Judges that got in as part of um, the book Tubathon. So I did a TBR video and um, a wrap up video, and I also did a video for Book Tubathon where I did all the video challenges one day. Uh, timing because of time zones and stuff are such that there wasn't really any way that I could do them. Uh, on the day that they were supposed to be out because almost all of the available time that I had to film was during the night <laughs> so um, that didn't happen but who knows maybe some sometime I'll figure out some way of lighting my videos that's not just natural lighting and maybe another year we'll have a run at that. Since Booktubeathon, I finished a few more things. I finished Old Man's War by John Scalzi, which I talked about in a Friday Reads. Almost all of these I've already talked about before, so I'll link um, my uh, talks about them into the description. Old Man's War was a really fun, quick science fiction story. Um, I read Utopian Man by Lisa Lang, which is historical fiction about a guy called Cole who lived in Melbourne in the 1850s um, onwards. And um, that story is set in the very late 19th century and really interesting time in Melbourne and um, in this guy's life. After Utopian Man, I turned to Ream D by Neil Stevenson, one of my favourite books of all time. I just felt like I needed something really big and hefty and meaty, and that's what I got there. I also did a full review of that, so I'll link that below. The last couple of things that I've got on my list are things that I've read since I did my last Friday read. So these are ones that I haven't really talked about at all. There is These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is a YA space drama um, romance and it was pretty standard fare for what you would expect uh, a YA space romance would be for the first half of the book. It's kind of got a bit of a Titanic in space vibe because there's this overly privileged girl who gets thrown together with this underclass boy and um, yeah and when disaster strikes they need to depend on each other. And, and that was highly entertaining, well-written, enjoyable for what it is. However, at about the two-thirds mark, there is this plot twist, this major plot twist, which I was not at all expecting, that made the, the book um, actually much darker from then on in and really a lot more thought-provoking than I was expecting. Um, at that point, the background science fictional elements, which had seemed very much like window dressing, actually come to the fore. And it's really kind of a proper science fiction story from then on in, um, which I, I'm, I'm still not 100% certain that the marriage of all those elements um, work together. But it certainly is a much more interesting book than it felt like it was being for the first half. The first half was enjoyable, um, but the second half was actually really interesting. So These Broken Stars are by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. 
The other two things that I have read this month are the second and third P.T. Hilton um, Zane Holloway novellas. The very first one I read last month, I think, which is called um, Tangles and Thorns. The second one is Swords and Shadows. And the third one, which just came out this week, is called Lightning and Thrones. These are small, internally consistent stories. They do both things at once. They give you a, a nice, well-contained story with a beginning, middle, middle and end, and also um, add together to this overall stor growing stories. I think PT's done really well, and these are very enjoyable quick reads. Apart from that, I've also continued limping along in my Bible read along. I've really fallen off the horse with that in the second half of the month. We're supposed to be up to the middle of Judith at this point, and I'm still halfway through 1 Samuel. So what I think I'm going to do is just jump ahead, uh, ignore the bulk of the rest of the historical books, which I have read before, and just um, start now with where the timeline's up to, which i probably go back a little bit and read Tobit and Judith, because they're books from the Catholic canon, which I'm much less familiar with, and so it will be interesting to have a look at those. And apart from the books that I've read, I also normally talk about the videos that I've made in these wrap-ups. So uh, apart from the videos that I've already spoken about, I also did a um, Top 5 Wednesday Maps video which was a lot of fun. I also did one Tuesday Talks video this month. It, the topic was uh, reading beyond enjoyment and I interpreted it as the things that we look for in our reading beyond mere enjoyment. Um, I got some really great responses and um, thank you to everybody who uh, watched that video and commented. Um, I really enjoyed the conversations that uh, arose from that so thanks very much guys. I did one tag this month. Um, which was the About Me tag, and yeah, nothing quite like talking about yourself for 10 minutes, so that was fun. I also did uh, a Hugo Awards wrap-up video. Uh, the Hugo Awards, uh, watching it live while Twittering with a whole bunch of other booktubers was one of the booktube highlights of the year for me. It was just so much fun. Having other people there in the peanut gallery with me was, uh, on Twitter was, yeah, just made it exceptional. I don't know, how did awards shows even work? How were they even watchable before Twitter? I don't understand. Uh, the last video uh, that I made this month that I haven't spoken about is was a Let's Read video. Brief from Stories from the Shelf started a Let's Read of um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and I read Chapter 4. Anyway, that's what I have been doing in August. Booktube-wise, um, there's been some other things going on in life. I, I spent a lot of time uh, prepping for the gig that we had last weekend, and um, and now I'm well and truly in recovery mode. <laughs> uh, for anybody who was interested, the gig went off okay. I only kind of slopped one uh, song. I kind of climaxed a bit early and left off an entire verse and left the band kind of scratching their heads at me a bit but I think it was okay I think it was okay um I don't think that completely ruined the whole set yeah anyway I had a lot of fun so looking back across everything um I had quite a lot of good reads this month but I think probably leaving Reemdy to one side because it's a favorite and so it's it's not really fair to compare it with uh, everything else I think that Pleasantville by Attica Locke is probably, which is the first thing that I read this month, I think it's probably the best book that I read this month. And if you're only going to pick up one of these, that would be the one that I encourage you to have a look at. I'd love to hear what you guys read in August. What was your best read from August? I hope you're all well, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.